All right, so in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about how one could use a multiplexer to implement a Boolean function for any combinational logic circuit. Given, for example, this Boolean function f of x, y, and z is equal to the summation of min terms 1, 2, 6, and 7, we're interested in, in implementing this Boolean expression using a multiplexer. And the first thing we need to think about is what sort of a multiplexer should we should we be using like what uh, what size the multiplexer we know that multiplexers could have different sizes for example 2 by 1 4 by 1 8 by 1 16 by 1 and so on because the basic idea of a multiplexer is that where you have a number of input signals and you're only interested in routing or passing just a single one of them to the output so there's always uh n by 1 right where this n is equal to 2 to the power of an integer value. That's why there's 2 by 1, 4 by 1, 8 by 1, and so on and so forth. So the way to do this would be examining how input variables we have. So for example, here we have three of them. And the first thing you need to do is just subtract one of them. So instead of considering all three, just think of them as two. And then raise this number in the power of 2, so 2 by 2 is 4, we know that we will be needing a 4 by 1 multiplexer. However, if we had here like 4 input variables, subtracting one of them would just give us 3 at the end, so 2 power 3 would be 8, and then we would be needing an 8 by 1 multiplexer. The next thing to do is uh, reconsidering all three variables of them and then writing them down in a true table starting from triple zeros and all the way up to triple one and then of course you'll be having a column for the output where you're going to be writing ones at the location specified here by the min terms and then for all the locations you're going to be writing zeros and the other ones right the next step is that I'd like you to forget about or just ignore all the variables except for the last one and just focus all your attention on these two columns here, the one for the last variable and for the output function. And then you're going to be observing or focusing on every two rows, every two consecutive rows together. So you're going to be comparing the values. If that is zero, what is the value of f? Well, it's also zero. If that is one, what is the value of f? It's also one. So apparently for these two rows, whatever values that takes, it's the same value for f. So you write down this conclusion that f is equal to z, and then you move on to the next couple of rows here. And it's quite clear that whatever values that takes on it's basically the inverse of it for the output f so you write down f is equal to z dash moving on for the next couple of rows it's apparent that whatever values z takes on f is always equal to zero so you just write it down f is equal to zero and finally for the last two rows irrespective of the values z takes f is always equal to one and thus you write down f is equal to one now, the next step would be to go back considering these two variables, which you've been ignoring for the last couple of minutes, and feed them into the selection lines. And this kind of makes sense because we already made a choice of a 4 by 1 multiplexer. We know that for this size of a multiplexer, we only have a couple of selection lines. So we feed them, these two first variables, and make sure that we, you, you consider the very first variable and connect it to S1 and then the next variable to S node. So these actually go into um, a manner that is inverse to the order of X, Y. So you have here X, then Y, but you have here S node and then S1. Keep this in mind, right? This is the right way to do it. And then what you're going to do is that for the four input lines, you're going to be connecting these values that you've made observations for so for the first one in for the first input the zeros input actually you're going to be having z and then z dash zero and one and having the connection in such a manner allows actually your output to be representative of this boolean expression at the top uh, so far i've just shown you how you can actually implement any combination of logic or boolean function representing a combination of logic function using a multiplexer. Nevertheless, I'm not telling you how this actually 
or why this actually makes sense. I'll be leaving that as an exercise for you. And it would be a good idea, you know, to go through different books or search online why this might be the case. In the lecture slides, I also gave you a longer example, which I do recommend that you can, you know, exercise or try try solving it on your hand. And one good idea, actually, one could uh, think of is instead of being given this Boolean function and, you know, asking um, as an exercise to find the proper implementation of it using a multiplexer, one could go about this problem in the opposite manner, such that the logic diagram will be given, like this one. I would be giving you this 8 by one multiplexer, for example, and then give, showing you how the different connections are made, and then asking, to, asking you to provide the Boolean expression at the end. I think this is also a nice exercise to look at, and one you should try at home. I hope this video has been useful, and I plan on... Uh, publishing more and more of these videos as short examples from the lectures as a, you know, a help or study aid at home. Thank you.